so tomorrow we're going to be doing some practice with uh, phylogenetic trees or cladograms. Now we're going to talk a lot more about these when we get to our classification unit, um, but right now it's really important to understand how they work so we can look at evolutionary relationships. All right, let's take a look. All right, so soon we're going to start talking about cladograms or phylogenetic trees as they're also called. And what it is is just a visualization of evolutionary relationships or relatedness between species. So um, this is kind of a complicated cladogram, so let's look at a simple one first. Okay, so we call cladograms or phylogenetic trees tree-like because they kind of have branches, and the endpoints of each branch is going to represent a specific species. So the uh, closer two species are located to each other, the more recently they share a common ancestor. So example here, flowering plants and ferns share a recent common ancestor, whereas ferns and club mosses share a more distant common ancestor. So in a properly scaled cladogram, the branch lengths are proportion proportional to the length of time and the intersection between two branches represents the common ancestor. Um, sometimes they're not proportional, sometimes we can't even gauge how many um, thousands of years it was since the common ancestor um, existed. However, um, it still gives us a general idea of where species are derived from. Okay, so some phylogenetic trees or cladograms are going to include additional details such as the evolution of particular physical structures. Um, so these structures are going to be called shared derived characteristics. Shared derived characteristics. Um, historically, these physical structures were what were used to create the cladograms, but now we have modern day cladistics that rely on heavy genetic evidence. Um, so we're able to look at the biochemical structure of proteins and compare that structure to different species proteins um, and see who's more closely related to each other. Okay, so how would we make our own cladogram or phylogenetic tree? Let's start with a problem. So let's compare some organisms. We know that now that chimpanzees and humans share about 96% of DNA, which would place them pretty close together on a phylogenetic tree. Humans and fruit flies share approximately 60% of their DNA, which would place them further apart. So let's try to draw a cladogram based on that information. Okay, so we can start with our initial branch, um, indicating the common ancestor down here. And what we're going to do is we know our species we end with, which is humans, put up here. Um, is going to be at the top, and that's pretty close to chimpanzees. So we'll put chimps here. And fruit flies we know are a little bit more distantly related, so we'll put them down here. So now we have our phylogenetic tree. We know that chimps and humans share a common ancestor, um, and fruit flies, chimps, and humans all probably share a common ancestor down here. So let's look at this phylogenetic tree with a bunch of dinosaurs. What can we guess or derive from uh, this cladogram? Who or what kind of dinosaurs are related to each other? So it looks like here um, our Deinonychus, which is actually a relative of the Velociraptor that we know, is more closely related to birds than Tyrannosaurus rex. And birds and the Tyrannosaurus actually share a closer common ancestor than the Tyrannosaurus and the Triceratops, and their closest common ancestors all the way down here. Tomorrow we're going to get a lot more practice with drawing cladograms, interpreting cladograms, or phylogenetic trees. Um, so make sure you understand everything in this video, and I'll see you tomorrow.